Next up is the final contestant, entry number 10, Kenneth Cook from Kyoto University. His presentation title is Cheesy Epidemiology, Studying the Biodiversity Disease Relationship in Borneo Primates. Kenneth, please go ahead. You know that cheese with holes? Well, here's a paradox. The more cheese, the more holes, but the more holes, the less cheese. So more cheese means less cheese. Behind this very cheesy thought experiment, I want you to see that not everything goes nicely in a given direction, and things can be a little more complicated. Now take biodiversity, at diseases, and voila, my main research question. When biodiversity increases or decreases, you have more or less disease risk? Your guess? Well, you could say pathogens are part of biodiversity, and that's why there's so many terrible diseases in the jungle. More host species also mean more targets for pathogens to infect and more opportunities to replicate. Diversity thus has an amplification effect, right? Well, sometimes yes, but in reality, we often observe quite the opposite, because to a pathogen, not all hosts are equal. A pathogen is only adapted to a given but evolving range of hosts. That's why you and a gorilla can get Ebola virus disease, but your cats cannot. Therefore, more host species not always provide more opportunities. It can rather reduce the portion of suitable hosts to a pathogens, diluting infection risk and leading us again to the cheese paradox. In science, apparent contradictions like these call for more research in the details of things. And same goes for my research question. So for my doctoral degree, I study diseases in wild population of primates found in Borneo. It's quite a complex context there. Up to 10 different species of monkeys and apes can live together in a single place, including iconic ones like orangutan and those funny-nosed proboscis monkeys. But these primates face declining habitats and intensifying human pressures like palm oil production. This can affect both biodiversity and disease transmission. And believe it or not, but in this part of the world, Southeast Asia, we strangely know very little about most infectious diseases in primates, even when some might be shared with us humans. Now, in places more or less disturbed, I collect fecal samples, or in other words, monkey poop, to see what pathogens these primates host. Preliminary results show that their intestinal pathogens have very different infection patterns. Some can infect almost all primates, while others infect only one species. Afterwards, I analyze with places with more primate diversity if they have higher or lower disease risk overall, and if some characteristics of the landscape, like human disturbance, influence the whole equation. This topic is crucial to explore, not only for these primates all more or less endangered, but also because understanding pathogen transmission in the wild is kind of urgent. If you paid attention to recent news, did you notice that sometimes, and it's not unlikely for primate diseases given our relatedness, well, sometimes pathogens can spill over to human from wildlife and cause global pandemics? Thank you, Kenneth. Let me ask you a question from Professor Ritchie from UQ. You mentioned you explored the influence of other characteristics. Did human factors influence your findings in any way? I, it's a bit early to say, but yes, I include some uh, human impacts like where human settlements are compared to the location of the non-human primate I studies. And I try to see if it impacts the, uh, the disease risk. It's a bit early because I'm still uh, beginning my doctoral uh, research. But what I can already tell you is that in some places, you can find some species of primates. Like you can find long-tailed macaque right in your kitchen, actually. But for sure, you won't find some um, species of primates like orangutans in gibbons in villages. And since they won't host the same disease, for sure, this is very likely to have an impact. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Kenneth.